Good morning, Michael here, and for the for today our meditation it's a good Bible story. Let's get into it from First Samuel, chapter seventeen. <laughs> now the Philistines get to gathered together their armies to battle, and were gathered together at Shechem. And belongeth to Judah, and pitch between Shachok and Azza in Ephedaminin. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubit and a span. I gather that to be about nine feet to nine inches. And he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spearhead weighed six hundred shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him, and he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine, and ye servants of Saul? Choose you a man from you, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me, and to kill me, then we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons. And the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle, and the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next unto him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening, and presented himself forty days. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brothers an ephah of this parched corn, and these ten loaves, and run to the camp of thy brethren, and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistine. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper, and took and went and, as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight, and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistine had put their battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage, and ran into the army, and came and saluted his brethren. And, his, and as he talked to them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistine, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel he came up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the man that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that we should defy the that he should defy the armies of the living God. 
And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him towards another, and spoke after the same manner. And the people answered him again, after the former manner. And when the, the words were heard which David spoke, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, that no man's heart fail because of him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by the beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And so that brings us to our verse of meditation here, uh, which is verse 37. Uh, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. Spurgeon expounds, This is not a promise if we consider only the words, but it is truly so as to its sense. For David spoke a word which the Lord endorsed by making it true. He argued from past deliverances that he should receive help in a new danger. In Jesus, all the promises are yea and amen, to the glory of God by us. And so the Lord's former dealing with his believing people will be repeated. Come then, let us recall the Lord's former loving kindness. We could not have hoped to be delivered aforetime by our own strength. Yet the Lord delivered us. Will he not again save us? We are sure he will. As David ran to meet his foe, so will we. The Lord has been with us. He is with us. And he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Why do we tremble? Was the past a dream? Think of the dead bear and lion. Who is this Philistine? True. He's not quite the same, and is neither bear nor lion. But then God is the same, and his honor is as much concerned in one case as in the other. He did not save us from the beast of the forest to let a giant kill us. Let us be of good courage. Yes, Bible history, Bible history, Bible history shines the path for us wherein we can be encouraged to go forth with confidence, with the anointing of the Lord, and defeat those who would seem to be a giant. Chop their heads off <laughs> in the name of the Lord. Well, Michael here, just you enjoy the meditation. Um, until next time. Declaring as always, Jesus is Lord. Be blessed.